Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore the concept of the gradient. What is the gradient? Well, the gradient is the result when you have the del operator operating on a function, a scalar function. For example, the scalar function can be a function of x, y, and z. In our example, the scalar function will simply be a function of x and y only. And so the gradient mathematically can be written as the upside down triangle times the function which is equal to the partial derivative of the function with respect to x in the i direction plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y in the j direction plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to z in the k direction. As you can tell, the result of that will indeed be a vector quantity. Now, if our function can be represented as an example, f equals x squared plus y squared, which gives you a paraboloid in a 3D dimension. So if this axis right here is the z-axis, and this here is the y-axis, and this here is the x-axis, you can see I have a three-dimensional paraboloid. And if you now take the gradient of that, so you have the del operated operating on that scalar function, notice what happens. We take the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y squared, which will give us 2x in the i direction. If we take the partial derivative with respect to y, we get 2y in the j direction. And if we take the partial derivative with respect to z, we simply get 0. So there's no k component here. Now, notice that to get a feel for that, we're going to use our graph right there and try to make sense out of it all. But before we do that, let's read these two sentences. First of all, since the del operator operating on a scalar function, the gradient is a vector quantity, it will have both magnitude and direction for any point in space. The magnitude at any point in space simply represents, or the magnitude of the gradient simply represents the slope along the tangent line to that surface, so along the tangent to the surface. So you can see anywhere you are along the surface, there will be a slope. If you go higher up, the slope will be steep. If you come further down to the zero, zero point here, the slope will be near zero. So the slope is determined by the magnitude of this expression right here. The direction, because notice vector quantity has both magnitude and direction, the direction of the gradient points in the direction of the greatest rate of increase of the function. The best way to think about that one is, let's say you're standing somewhere uh, on the side of a mountain. And of course, if you can go straight up or you can go straight down and that would be the direction in which the slope would be steepest. Or you can go at an angle or you can walk around the mountain and not change altitude. So that would be the direction of the least slope straight up the mountain or straight down the mountain would be the direction of the greatest slope. So where the vector is pointing to tells you, and in this case, if you find the actual direction based upon the result of doing the gradient, finding the gradient, the direction of each of these vectors will simply point in the direction of the greatest increase of the slope. So the magnitude is the magnitude of the slope along the tangent line and the direction where the vector is pointing tells you where the slope is the steepest. Now let's go over here and take a look at that. So here we have a paraboloid and let's say that we go to a value where x equals 1 and y equals 0. So we move along the x-axis to a distance where x equals 1, y will be 0, then I go straight up where I get, where I touch the surface. So now I come over here and I say when y is equal to 0, the j component goes to 0. And when x is equal to 1, the x component will be equal to 2. Which means at that point right there, the slope is equal to 2 along the tangent of the surface. And notice that the vector points along the x direction. In that direction, the slope will be steepest. Now, of course, you're not walking away from it. But if you walk in this direction, if you let x increase, that's when you have the greatest increase in the slope. As a counter to that, let's say we move 90 degrees from this direction. In this direction, notice that I move along this line right here, the slope doesn't change at all. The slope is the same anywhere along this circular path. So if I walk in this direction, the slope is zero. If I walk in this direction, the slope is the maximum. And anywhere in between, it'll be between zero and the maximum slope. 
the maximum change, or I should say, the maximum change in the slope. Here, let's go to this point right there where x equals 0 and y is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 0, this goes to 0. When y is equal to 1, I get the gradient of f is equal to 2 in the j direction. Remember, the magnitude, which would then would be 2, would be the representation of the slope along the tangent line. So again, at this point right here, the slope along the tangent line will be equal to 2. And straight out, if I go in this direction, straight out away from the paraboloid, if, if y increases, that means that's the direction of the maximum change in the slope or the maximum change in the slope here. If I, ch if I let the value of y change, I have the maximum change in the slope. That's what the direction signifies. Again, if I move at a 90 degree angle of that, the change in the slope will be zero because it's, it's equal to two anywhere along that path. The slope will be equal to two anywhere along that circular path. Now, what about a point in between? Let's say right in between these two points along that circular path, there the x value will be the square root of two and the y value will be the square root of two. When we plug that in here, I get twice the square root of 2 and twice the square root of 2. And if I find the magnitude of that, again, I get the value 2, which means since that point is also on the circular path, anywhere along the path for any value of x and y along this path, the slope along the tangent line of this paraboloid will indeed be 2. A good example of that is, for example, if you have the equation on the y-x-axis, and you have an equation like this where you have y is equal to x squared, and you find the point where x is equal to 1, the slope dy dx is equal to 2x, so when x is equal to 1, the slope is indeed equal to 2. So it's very similar to the concept of slope, except when we find the gradient, we don't only find the magnitude of the slope along the surface, we also find the direction of maximum slope if you walk in that, or the maximum the greatest rate of increase of the function or the greatest increase or the greatest slope if I move in the direction of the gradient. For example, straight out this way, straight out this way, straight out this way. If x increases in this direction, if y increases in this direction, if x and y increases at the same rate right here, then I find the path of the greatest increase of the function. So hopefully that will give you a much better understanding of what we mean by the gradient. The gradient in summary, it's kind of like finding the derivative, best way to it, find the derivative of the surface of, well, surface in this case of a paraboloid, of any, any shape that you might have along the surface. You find the slope of that surface anywhere along the surface by taking the gradient, and the direction of the gradient will tell you in which direction you'll have the maximum change of the function meaning the greatest slope will be in that direction. And that's what we mean by the gradient of a scalar function.